I want to take a look at this Everchill DC fridge. Now, a DC fridge, meaning using direct current, is different from AC power. AC power is what you get in an outlet in your house. DC power is what you get in your cigarette lighter port in your car. The advantage of DC power is it's basically 100% efficient. Whereas on something on a solar generator, when you're running through AC power, the power comes from the battery, goes through the inverter, and then out the outlets. So because that power has to be converted, you lose efficiency. So this is the largest DC fridge I could find. It's about 10.7 cubic feet, if I remember correctly. And it's actually designed for like RVs and stuff like that. I plan on using this in my RV or up at my cabin. I'm still deciding. But I've been running this for a few months now. I've actually been running it off my EcoFlow River Max. And that's worked really well. I basically just plug in the wall outlet. It recharges quickly. And then I run it off the battery. And I've been cycling that. And this runs it for about 8 to 12 hours. But now I'm going to do a full test running the Delta and the River Max. See how long these can actually sustain this fridge with using solar panels in an off-grid type situation. Now, I know you can't really see it, but the fridge section is near empty and the freezer has got some stuff in it to help keep it cool. And I wanted it to not be 100% full for this test. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. I think this is gonna be a pretty fun video and we'll see just how efficient this Everchill DC fridge is. Now, if you haven't seen my other videos on this DC fridge, this is the JP40 and it's from Iceco. This is my portable DC fridge. I've taken this on many road trips all across the country, camping and so on, and it works very, very well. But I wanted something that was a lot bigger. So that's why I got this Everchill. Now, the cool thing about the Everchill is I've got a 27 foot travel trailer that I renovated and run 100% off solar. So if you also haven't seen that video, you may wanna go watch that. But this fridge will replace the fridge that's in the RV. And like 99.8% of fridges in RVs actually use AC power, which means they are less efficient. They use a lot more power. The fridge that's in my RV is about a quarter of the size of my home fridge and it uses equal or more power than my home fridge. That's how inefficient RV fridges are. They are just atrocious when it comes to efficiency. All I have to do in my RV is I have to remove some wood paneling that's above the current fridge, and then the current fridge would come out, and this one would go straight in its place. So we'll get the measurements here in a minute, and that way you can check to see how this would fit in your RV, if that's something you're interested in doing. And that was the original plan, but now, because I run my cabin 100% of the year, and only my travel trailer for a few times in the year, I was thinking it might actually be better to put this up at my cabin, so I'm debating that, but that's the original purpose of this was to put it in my RV. Now, this fridge did not come with this DC plug. So I bought this DC plug just on Amazon. I'll put the links down below. And by the way, everything that I talk about in this video, I'll have links down below. That way you can get the best pricing and know exactly what I use. I do that simply because I hate when I watch a video, I'm trying to learn something and then there's no links provided and I have to go try to figure out what they were talking about. So all that stuff's down below. Just click the show more button. This is somewhere around a 15 foot cable and there's just two wires to wire in to the back of this fridge. Very, very simple. This fridge is very lightweight. And one of the reasons I chose to use my Delta, because this is about the smallest size I recommend for an emergency. And I have another video completely reviewing the EcoFlow Delta. You can also see that. Or if you subscribe and click the bell, I will be doing my one year update video on the Delta and have some really cool information that we've never talked about before. So you may wanna be subscribed, like the video if you find it helpful, click the bell, that way you can see this new video that's coming out. So we see right now it's using 97 watts. Now the Delta can take up to 400 watt solar input. So we will be connecting solar panels in a little bit, but I got to leave for a few hours, run some errands. So I'm going to let this sit here and run down, just run the fridge here in the warm garage. And when I get back, we'll see how well it's done. Connect the solar panels up. Ideally we'll get a full charge back before the evening hits. And then we're going to see if the Delta will run the Everchill fridge all night long and then recharge the next day. Okay, so I've been gone for three hours and 10 minutes. I just got back to check on this. It says it's running zero watts right now. So we're all the way down to 86%. Now, this is why it can be really hard to determine how much power your refrigerator uses. Because if you look on the sticker on your refrigerator, it may say 400 watts or 600 watts or however many amps. 
but it's not constantly running at that rate. That's just when it's actually working hard to actually cool the inside. So basically, if we take what's happened here in the last three hours, this should be able to run for about 21 to 22 hours because 14% equals a little over three hours and 14 goes into 100 a little bit more than seven times. So we'd effectively take three hours times seven and that gives us about 21 hours. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna connect up the solar panels, get this charged back up, and then once the sun goes down, this will run all night long and we'll be able to see how much power it uses when there's truly no sun and nothing else I can do to recharge this. In the sense that I was running this during an emergency or something like that. So let me get those solar panels set up and let's see how this works. Okay, well it's actually been an hour. One of my neighbors stopped by and so I didn't have this connected up yet because we were just talking for so long, but I got the solar panels on. So we are ready to connect. Now, what I wanted to say was in that time of another hour, we went down another 4%. So we've used 18% in about four hours and 15 minutes. And so when you do the math and how that calculates out, it's about 23 hours of estimated runtime. So actually a little bit longer than I was originally saying, but like I said, let's just get this charged up, run it through the night and run this as if we had no grid power and I needed to keep running this fridge. Okay, so right now I'm getting about 360 watts, seems to still be climbing. And uh, it says we're using zero watts to run this. So this says it'll be charged up in about an hour. So just so you can see, this is at 100% and Everchill is still very, very cold. No issues there at all. Freezer on top, fridge on bottom. Plenty of room here in the door for storing lots of stuff. And it goes pretty far back. That's one thing I really dislike about my RV fridge is it's pretty shallow. It's officially been 17 hours since the last time I checked on this. The light is still on, we're still running and we're at 36 degrees with the low of 34 degrees and it's saying we've got about seven hours left at the current runtime so we're really looking at 24 hours of the everchill running just off of a medium-sized solar generator so imagine using something bigger like the titan solar generator you're looking closer to 48 hours now if you haven't subscribed yet you'll want to do that right now and click the bell notification that way you get notified of when i have my upcoming reviews of some more ecoflow stuff including the ecoflow delta max and delta pro now these reviews will not be like any other review that has come out about those units but all in all this everchill fridge uses such little power and it would be using even less power if i had it completely full of food but now let's get to measuring this and see how it would fit in the rv on a side note this is how I manage my solar cables. It's just an extension wire wheel so you can keep everything organized. So the exact measurements on the Everchill DC fridge are 23 and a half wide by, call it 25 because this has a slight bulge to the front. It's not completely flat. And to the top of that hinge is 59 and 5 eighths. Or to the top of the door is 59 and 1 eighth. There is a lip on here, so there's actually a seam up for the wood, and then this trim piece actually reaches over. So, I'll have to take that into account. We're looking right at 24 inches, and the Everchill is 23 and a half, so that's going to fit perfect right there. And then the depth on the wall here is 24 and 5 eighths. The Everchill was 25, so it'll just be sticking out almost a half an inch more. And then the height needs to be 59 and a quarter, essentially. We're at 60 and a quarter inches to this line right here. So what I could do is just follow these seams that are right here, cut this out, and the fridge goes straight in. But then the question is, how do we get the DC power? For me, the easiest option is just to use another 12 volt cigarette lighter port, which I have here up in this cabinet. So rather than hardwiring the fridge, it just makes a lot of sense to use this right here. If I really wanted to, I could just take this plate off take the wires that are on this plug and off of that plug and then wire the fridge directly to those wires because the DC wire that I got from Amazon will reach all the way over here. Now the plan is to go through the roof and do that or just like I did for my solar panels, it's called a cable raceway. Basically it's like a white plastic trim box that I could put through here and I could just run the wires all the way around and into there. I've already opened up behind the fridge here to see how much room there is and it's very easy to do. Basically pull this whole thing out, other fridge goes right in and that's exactly how I would do this. So you just need to know the measurements for your travel trailer, RV, whatever. And there is also a smaller size fridge if you have a smaller camper. 
So now that we know how well the DC fridge does, I'm gonna compare it to how well my full-size GE AC power fridge does. I've got the Delta right here, so that way we're powering from the same source. It's already plugged in. You can see the lights are on inside. Now really the only difference is going to be that this is fully stocked, whereas the DC fridge is not fully stocked. And we'll just see how long the Delta will run this full-size fridge, and then we'll know how it compares to the DC fridge. Just a quick update, we're two and a half hours in and we are down 20%. According to the current math, 20% gave me two and a half hours. This should run for approximately 12 and a half hours. It's been seven hours and 45 minutes since we started doing this and the Delta is at 2% and it must have actually shut off because the fridge is not turning on. So it's still cold, but I'm glad I caught this. So it says it's still on but it's not actually running the AC power. So we've seen how long the average hill will run, pretty amazing. Now we've seen how a standard fridge, even full of food, will not run very long. It uses a lot more power than something like this. Of course it is bigger, we have to take that into consideration, but now I wanna see how the average hill fridge compares to the average Dometic RV fridge or travel trailer fridge, whatever you wanna call it. So this is accessing the fridge panel from the outside of my travel trailer. So I just took off this, panel right there and now I can see everything behind the fridge and right here is the AC power outlet but I'm going to unplug this plug it into an extension cord run the extension cord into the inside of the travel trailer and plug it directly into the Delta and now it is on electric turn on the AC power from the Delta and boom 350 watts right now is what it's using. What I did is I filled the freezer with a bunch of these ice packs. So that way it simulates having some food in here. And we'll check on this periodically and see how well it does. It has officially been two and a half hours. I'm just doing a checkup on this to see how much power this has drawn. I want you to comment down below what percent you think this is at after running this Dometic RV fridge. I'm gonna wait just a couple seconds. Go ahead and comment. If you guessed 37%, then you were right. Are you kidding me? Now it's not drawing anything right now. This is why I really am upset with the RV industry. They put in such inefficient stuff. It's becoming slightly more common to get equipment that is more efficient. So really with a fridge like this, it needs to be running on propane or don't do it off electricity unless you've got a gas generator or something like that because this is using ridiculous amounts of power. This is using more power. It's one quarter of the size of my fridge in my house. And it's only been running for about a third as long as that fridge ran off of the Delta. And this is already at 37%. So in that regard, these things are super inefficient. This is the reason why I wanted to swap my RV fridge with the DC fridge because the DC fridge would run 24 hours off of this. And here in my RV, I run the entire thing boondocking off of my Titan solar generator. And that has 4,000 watt hours, which is three times as much as this in terms of battery capacity. And then I have an additional 2,600 watt hours in my lithium iron phosphate batteries, which are my onboard batteries. And those are the Lion Energy batteries. Each battery is equivalent to the same size as this. And since this can run that DC fridge for about 24 hours straight, 48 hours is what I could run. Much larger fridge, the DC fridge is much larger than this. It's at least twice the capacity. I'm gonna let this run for a little bit while longer. We're gonna see how long it takes to get down to 0%. So we have a better calculation as how long this will actually run. So this is a little interjectory rant that I have. It's just really frustrating. So I'll come back in just a little bit and we'll see where this is at. It's been another hour. So this has been running a total of three and a half hours and we are down to 4%. For me, this really drives the point home that the Everchill DC fridge is leaps and bounds more efficient. And really it's pretty easy to say that the Everchill DC fridge is eight times more efficient than this Dometic RV fridge. So this will run for three hours off of the same size battery versus the Everchill, which is 24 hours off this battery. I hope this video was a great help to you. I truly do recommend this Everchill DC fridge. It really, really is amazing. The video speaks for itself. This will last much, much longer in an emergency than a traditional fridge or even an RV fridge. 
There's a coupon code for this, so if you want to get that information, just click the show more button down below, click the link, insert the code, get your savings, and you'll definitely not be dissatisfied with it. I haven't been, I've had this for many months now, it's been working great. This is gonna save me a ton of power during emergencies to keep my food cold. And the number one thing that people ask about when I help them figure out what kind of solar generator they need is trying to figure out what will run their refrigerator for a long period of time. So the reverse of that is what refrigerator will run for a very long time and the DC Everchill fridge is the way to go. If you found this helpful, make sure to smash that like button. Check out my other videos. There may be other videos that you find helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be prepared and I'll see you in the next video.